Hey everyone, this is Mike from MyTechie. I'm here with another little tutorial on how to back up a SQL database and how to do, I should say, SQL Express database um, and how to do it efficiently with a batch script and using a scheduled task. So, first off, just to save time here, I've went ahead and already went into the file here. You can see mytechie.com slash downloads slash SQL auto backup. Dot BAT. Uh, all casing must be correct. I'll leave uh, the link in the description on the right hand side so you can go ahead and either click on that or copy and paste it up to you. Now if you use Firefox you will need to go ahead and do two steps here. If you use Internet Explorer it will ask you to you want to run or save the file. Um, of course in your case you will save the file not run it. So we're going to go ahead and fix it with Firefox so I can show you the long way here. So if you just press Control A or right click and select all uh, and copy we're going to go ahead at that point in time open up a notepad you can if you're using Windows 7 you can do you know the Windows key plus notepad notepad should show up and you just go ahead and run it or if you're on Windows XP or Windows 7 you can do start run or Windows plus R type in notepad and there it is so if you press control V you're going to go ahead you know paste it in there or edit paste however you want to do it or right click paste and you're going to save it when you go to save it I'm going to save it in my D drive here just for quickness sakes um, and I'm just going to go ahead and save it as SQL bat or SQL backup let's just say right there that one so and I'm going to call it dot bat now that's very important you need to make sure you put that dot bat because if not it's going to try to save it as a text file in this case because I have a SQL backup folder it's going to go ahead and actually just go into that folder so make sure you save SQL dot bat click on save and there it goes so just a quick explanation of what's going to actually have to have, to happen here um, so you don't have to further watch the video if you don't need to is that we're going to be setting parameters at the command line level and you're going to see SQL Server 1 instance SA pass DB name so you can actually theoretically use the same exact file the SQL backup file and just simply create different scheduled tasks to back up different databases and I'll show you that here in a second so keep in mind though this is the main and good important thing. I'm going to make about five different notes here. One note is that this script must be ran on the server that's hosting SQL Express. Yes, it cannot be ran from any other server, like a backup server or tape server or anything like that. It must be ran from the server that's hosting the SQL Express. Second note, you cannot put the original file on a network drive. However, I have made it so that you can copy it to a network drive uh, after you copy it locally. So as you can see here, you have temp back and then copy back. So basically you have to copy it locally, then copy it to the network drive, and then you can delete the local at the end by just telling it the variable of yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of show you that whole thing in, in this tutorial here, but we want I just want to make sure that you no note that. Third big note, no drive uh, paths can have spaces. Unfortunately, this is a, a, a flaw, I should say, in this script, I guess. It's because it is a batch script, and if you do a space in your your drive letter, you will go ahead, and at that point in time, it will not work correctly, because it's going to go ahead and think it's a second variable or a new variable coming in. Now, if you have spaces and you want spaces, you and you know a little bit about batch, um, contact me I'll show you on how to do it you can do it you just can't do it the way we're doing it today so just go ahead and contact me post and I'll, I'll be more than happy to show you on how to do it so we're gonna go ahead and go from here and we're gonna go ahead and show you I have a test database already in place so we can go ahead and back it up so I'm gonna keep this open and just move it off to the side here and the first thing you're gonna wanna do just for testing purposes is we're gonna go ahead and right click on the actual batch file click on send to and then desktop to create a shortcut on the desktop now this again this is only for testing purposes so that we can make sure that it's actually backing up the database and then what we're going to do is we're going to we'll just go and basically copy that param line to the server or the scheduled task and then at that point in time um, you can do research on google on how to make a scheduled task so if you go to properties you'll notice that it's trying to go to dsql.bat now what we're going to do here is we're just going to start adding some more variables at the end. So if we go here, we're going to see the first variable it wants is the SQL Server. In this case, my 
computer is called Mike D dash lap. You can type in local host if you want to. You can just put a period if it's, of course, because it's a local. It does not matter. Anything will work. The instance name is SQL Express. Now keep in mind that the casing does not matter on the computer name or the instance name, only on the username and password. So here, we're going to go to the username. Uh, it's just SA. The password is just SA. Um, and the DB name is going to be, in this case, I think it was test database. Now, let me explain one thing as well. Um, you you might think, well, this is a security risk. I'm exposing the you know the SA user password. Um, you're definitely right. Now, my preference is actually to go make a backup user, uh, and then assign it to the database that you want, and just simply click, like backup backup. It's not a big deal. All that they can do, all they are, is a backup operator. Now, if you need help doing that, let me know. I will help you. Unfortunately, I can't go over that whole thing in this uh, video. So here we have the SQL Express database. Or my my D laptop to the computer name, then the inst then the instance name, then the server or SA user, then the SA password, then the database name, which is test database. Now it wants the temp backup location. So if we go to my D drive here, I have SQL backup and I have a temp folder. Now imagine when we go to do this that this is going to be basically uh, the local folder, of course, that. I'm going to be using and then the final location will be final now this could the final location as you can see here temp copy back location this final location could be on a UNC drive could be on a network drive it does not matter um, as long as it can connect it will go ahead and copy that file because all it's doing is doing like an X copy type of deal so uh, we're going to go ahead and do SQL backup temp and SQL backup final. Uh, I'm copying it in the same folder and the same computer uh, and the same hard drive, but again, it could be somewhere else on this this final location. So we're going to go in log location. We'll just go ahead and put it in just D SQL backup. And then the uh, delete local, we're going to say yes because we want to delete it, especially if you're copying to another location. You just don't want duplicates laying around. So and you copy to another location because that's probably your backup server and that backup server probably has a tape backup on it so we're just going to go ahead and just say yes now notice that you cannot have two spaces or anything you must just make sure that they're all single spaced out and I noticed that I did put a capital Y uh, you need to make sure that's capital because if not it will fail so we're going to go ahead and apply this and we're going to click OK and we're going to go ahead and run this and see if it works. Now this database is super small, so you will see that it's going to go like lightning. So if you want to pause the video while doing it so you can see the command prompt that pops up and shows you the percentage that it increased, go ahead and do so. Uh, if not, you can just go ahead and take my word for it and I'll show you the, the final folder and restore the database for you as well. So we're going to run this. You see that I did the percents there. Um, you didn't even see it go in the SQL temp folder because Windows cache wasn't that fast. But if we go to SQL Backup and go to Final, you'll notice that it is in the Final folder with the date appended as, as promised. So here you can see that I put the year. If you want to change this, by all means, go ahead and do so. Um, you can change it to you know month, day, year, the standard US format. I do it this way because when sorting through a million backups, it's a really easy thing to, to get to. So you can see test database underscore. So I always put the database name that you're backing up plus that. So if you're storing a bunch of databases in the same folder, of course, you're going to have an easy way to you know, sort through them. As well as if you go to SQL backup, you'll notice that each database that you're going to use a backup for, you put it in the same log location. That's not a problem because I always pre-append the test database uh, or in this case the database name before the actual uh, file. So here you can see that copy successfully gives you the final location of where it copied to. It will not give you the, t the temporary location, but again it will give you the final location. So again if you're install putting it on the other server over there, you're going to go ahead and see that it's going to be the final location. So we have this final backup here. We're going to go ahead and see if we can't go ahead and restore this backup. So I'm going to open this just so I can show you that it does work. Now, if you look here on the test database, we have a table called test table. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to restore database. I'm going to go from device and D and SQL backup, and we're going to go to final and select that. And so there it is. If we click on restore, we actually have to first type in a name. So let's call it test. 
and we'll click on restore. Now, because I have the other database there, it's going to try to restore it with the same name. I can't do that, so I'm just going to go and take out test database, and we're just going to call it test. And the same thing for the log file. Just taking out database and calling it test. Okay? So, if I restore it, you'll notice that it's done restoring. If we expand test and we go to tables, you'll see that we have the test table there. So this concludes the tutorial on how to back up a SQL Express database with the script provided. I hope this helps out all you administrators, and if you have any other questions, please feel free to message me. I'd be more than happy to help you out. Thank you. Bye-bye.